Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. Sorry it's been so long since we've seen each other. Um, my name is Sue Ellis Saller and I'm an angel tarot and oracle card reader and I am doing some unboxing videos because I got new decks and I've kept them all in their shrink wrap. I've waited to make videos to share them with you to open um, on video. So today I'm going to be working with the Jeopardizzi Tarot by Nino Jeopardizzi. And this is published by U.S. Game Systems, Inc. Um, I saw Ariel Renee do um, some spreads with this, and I really liked it, so I wanted to get it. Of course, me, the tarot collector that you know I am. So, on the box it says the Jeopardizzi Tarot is a re-imaging of the tarot universe through the visionary lens of leading Parisian contemporary artist, Nino Jeopardy. In each of her 78 collage style sur surrealistic paintings, she boldly explores the many layers of esoteric symbolism in tarot, revealing its transformative powers, which sounds totally up my alley. Her unique interpretations of the minor arcana delve deep into emotional as well as numerological associations. Again, sounds awesome. Um, this deluxe set includes a 178-page book with the full-color artwork accompanied by descriptions and divinatory meanings to guide the reader through the fool's journey toward self-knowledge. So, and it has a full-color illustrated book included. So, this is, I got it off of Amazon right around Christmas time. I know, I'm so bad with opening my decks lately. So let me just cut this puppy open. I thought bringing scissors would help me. Got my scissors here. So, and, you know, first of all, you gotta love a nice, ooh, a nice, well-constructed box like this. You know, where the tarot deck can go into, there's a little nook for the deck so it doesn't like flap around in there. Mm, I'm already impressed. Um, and many of you know, or maybe you don't know, I'm a real fan of art. So looking at this from an artist's perspective and from a fan of art, ooh, and it's really cool too. Like the book is really nice, well done. It says 178 pages, but it's also, you know, um, ooh. It's a really cool deck. Okay, first of all, I'm like, oh, I like this. Um, but it has color pictures inside the book as well. So, really nice here. Um, yeah, you, can, you can't beat a deck like this. And then it's also got some spreads in the back. So, compass spread. So it's the four winds spread. Fire and smoke five card spread. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Um, so those are pretty new. And then it's got notes and everything. It's a nice book. Um, and then the deck is a good size. I'm like kind of a freak about how big the decks are because some of them are just too big for me to work with. And um, so I like something that's easy for me to shuffle and to handle. And I'm just kind of opening the cellophane here, the shrink wrap or whatever. So it's got like those, the stock is really nice. It's a thick, nice stock. It's got a satin finish, so it's going to be really easy to shuffle. And then there's, uh, oh, okay. It just lays out, you know, um, what the suits are, what she calls them. So it looks like there's differences in wands or fire. She does that. But uh, cups are tides and coins are gardens. Uh, and she also has court card titles as well. And just lists list the elemental um, associations there. So these, you know, you can see the Parisian artistic influence, definitely. That's the fool. 
the magician. Oh, that's an interesting magician. You know, and the flowy way. These are definitely so far not Rider Waite based, as you can see. And the Empress. War for the Emperor card. Which is kind of a cool, you know, if you think about the the Aries Association and how the the normal um, emperor is in his um, suit of armor and everything, you can see how war would be uh, an interesting interpretation for four. Um, the hero fan. This is a pretty cool card, um, and definitely going up the ladder, up the steps. Love. Wow, this is pretty cool. It's got like a um, dang, and I can see his picture in my head, and I can't think of his name. Um, anyway, the chariot, interesting. So, justice. I'm going to turn these over so you guys can see them too. Oh, the hermit. You know, and some of these are really Dali-esque and, and, and in a way, and you can see like all the different artistic influences in them. You know, there's a bunch of different influences in there. The fortune card is pretty cool. I like that. Strength, you know, that has really normal symbolism there. The drowned man. Oh, that's kind of cool. Instead of the hanged man, the drowned man. Death. Interesting interpretation. Temperance, huh? Um, the devil. Okay. So ooh, the tower. Oh, that's a cool one. So ah, the star. I really like this. Usually, this is one of my favorites to go to in every deck and just to see how they interpret it. But it's a really nice one. The moon. Interesting. So. Um, the sun, this is cool, too. Looks like she likes bats, because I've seen them in a few here. Judgment, okay. And the world. So, and here we go with the bats again. So, the wind, or the air signs. Um, she's chosen bats, it looks like. It's her signifier but it's not in all of them you know there's the traditional knives in this one through the hearts through the three with a bat and an owl in the four and the five it's kind of cool hmm now is this Icarus or is this a different you know kind of interpretation of that the seven that's interesting and I love, you know, how some are very rich in color and others are very, you know, don't have so much color at all in them. Nine. And here's the bats again in the ten of wind. So this is the corresponding to the air. Um, the gesture with the bats. Stranger. Interesting interpretation. The queen is cool here, and then the king. And then we go on to fire or wands, batons in some, the two of fire. This is the, the card that's on the, on the box, I think, yeah. So I was wondering, three, oh, interesting interpretation of that too. Four, that's cool, five, Wow, look at that. I mean, look at, when you look at these, I'm just like, oh, art. So, the six, and that's a clue. Wow, seven. He burns himself up for his cause. Eight, volcanic eruption commencing. Nine. This kind of reminds me of the one that's in the Tarot Illuminati, just in a really roundabout way. The ten. Jester, Stranger, 
which would be the knight. So the jesters are the um, pages, knights are strangers, and then the queen and the king. She's cool. So, but he's a little, you know, covered up for what I would consider a king, but you know, that's all interpretation. So tides, ace of tides is cups, two of tides. So this is kind of cool. Loyalty in dogs and everything. Three of tides, frolicking horses. And the four, they're back to back, kind of daydreaming there. Five, that's kind of interesting. She's pregnant and waiting, holding on. Ah, but she's in a cemetery. Oh, that's really, you know. Like they said, layers. And the six, which we know is like a link to childhood and um, reminiscing and nostalgia. Here we have the snakes. This is an interesting seven of tides. Eight of tides. That's... That's kind of a cool way of looking at it. Nine, wishing on a star. Cool. And then the ten, which is more visually stimulating than, you know, kind of um, with, oh, wow, with the um, traditional interpretation kind of uh, symbolism. The jester of tides, that's really cool. Huh? And then the stranger. So, so far, I love this deck. I'm not at all unimpressed. I totally am impressed with it. That was the queen, and here's the king. Then we have pentacles, which in this deck, in the Jeopardy deck, it's the gardens. Cute little butterflies there. So the ace. The two, we have the common juggler in there. Three of gardens. That's a cool interpretation of it. And the four. Now this is really kind of an interesting way of looking at the four. I might almost look at the six that way, but you know, the four is definitely a cool thing too. And then the five, that's very modernized version of it. Six, generosity and benevolence. Seven, that's a nice picture there. Eight craftsmanship, and that's cool with the cogs and the the um, springs and everything like that. Nine. Oh, I really like this nine of gardens. That's usually one of my favorite cards in the deck too. And the ten, you know, lots of abundance there. Um, the jester, kind of sad. The stranger, which would be like the knight. The queen, wow, look at her, she's fabulous. Really beautiful, richly done. And the king here, king of gardens, which would be pentacles. Um, overall, I would say, wow, this, is, this deck is really, you know, kind of exceeds my expectations almost as far as... Um, when I see something that's done by an artist and by a modern artist, nonetheless, I kind of get a little um, happy to see what's in there. Now, it does look like there was somebody else who wrote the text for her, Steve Lucas, it says on the book. So I can't wait to start working with this deck, and um, we'll see how it reads and everything in the coming days. And I'll probably do like a deck interview on my website. So check it out there. If you like this post and you want to see more, um, I have like five different decks just waiting for deck reviews right now or, or unboxings. Um, yeah, I'll show that later. Anyway, so if you like this, like, subscribe to my, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We'll talk soon and I hope you're having a fabulous day. Bye. See you later.